Let's look at basic RAW development in Affinity Photo. You can open a RAW file either by going to File, Open, and browsing to the file, or by click dragging the file into the app and releasing the mouse button over the interface. When a RAW file is opened, the app automatically moves into the Develop Persona. This is a dedicated workspace for making straightforward adjustments to the image before developing it and moving on to layer-based editing in the main photo persona. We therefore have a set of corrective tools on the left here and the ability to make adjustments via the right-hand studio, which is comprised of several panels. The basic panel contains fundamental adjustments, such as a linear exposure adjustment, allowing you to shift the image's exposure in stops. Now, with any of these sliders, double-clicking on the handle will reset it to its default position. We also have black point and brightness sliders, allowing us to change the overall brightness of the image and remap the black point where appropriate. Within the Enhance section, we have options such as Contrast and Clarity, the latter of which can be used to accentuate or reduce textural structure. The Saturation and Vibrance sliders can also control the intensity of colours in the image. I'll open another example in order to look at white balance and shadows and highlights. Shadows and highlights lets us boost or reduce specific tones that fall into the shadow and highlight tonal regions. White balance is used to control both temperature and tint and can be used in conjunction with the white balance tool located on the tools panel here. If I click on a white surface of the building here, the tones will shift. This is a rather inaccurate approach. A sensible step would be to measure off a proper white balance card, but it can be used sometimes to discover what kind of white balance shift is needed in order for a bright near white surface to be neutral. You can also click drag with the white balance tool to continually update the white balance as you move through the image. The temperature and tint sliders can be changed manually as well. So I might bring the temperature up and also bring the tint up. Temperature is generally understood as it follows the Kelvin scale along the Planckian locus or black body locus and most natural light sources fall within this defined range. Tint, however, is used to correct deviation from this black body locus and is predominantly for artificial light sources that can have strong magenta or green spikes or tints. The tint slider is therefore quite important for any type of photography that features artificial lighting, such as fluorescent bulbs and LEDs. The sliders can also be reset to their initial values by clicking the reset icon here. The Profiles option at the bottom allows you to determine the output colour profile when the image is developed. It defaults to sRGB, which is a sensible choice as many devices and displays are able to represent more or less the entire range of sRGB. If you wish to work with more intense colour values outside sRGB, however, you can change this to a wider profile, such as ROM RGB which is the equivalent to Profoto. Notice the histogram at the top has now changed. The color values have shifted to the left of the histogram as there is now room to accommodate more intense colors. There is a dedicated video that covers color profile development, which explores this in more detail. For now, we will switch back to sRGB. Moving across to the lens panel, this is where we can apply various lens corrections. Where possible, Affinity Photo will infer lens corrections from metadata. In this case, lens corrections for my Olympus lens are supported and applied. If you have shot with a manual lens that has no electronic connection and so cannot be recorded in the RAW files metadata, you can search for it and apply it. And then I can click the reset button here to return to the appropriate lens correction for this image. 
In addition to the automatic corrections, you can correct general, horizontal, and vertical distortion, as well as rotation for crooked horizon lines. And once again, I'll just reset these values. A small trick for wide angle lenses is to reduce the scale slightly. You will often find that because of the heavy distortion correction being applied, there is extra detail hiding outside of the current crop. Going down to 95% reveals alpha areas at the top and bottom. So I will bring it back up to 96. Other options on this panel include chromatic aberration reduction, defringing, and lens vignette removal. These are generally taken care of by the lens correction profile, but you can experiment with them manually if you wish to. I'll move back to the previous raw image I was developing, where I can also quickly apply the lens correction scale trick. On the details panel, there are options for noise reduction and sharpening, although do be aware that you can apply these non-destructively as live filter layers in the main photo persona, which may be preferable. By default, Affinity Photo will perform color noise reduction, which leaves luminance noise intact and maximizes detail. You may still wish to remove some or all of this luminance noise, however, such as the noise in the sky here. I can just move the luminance slider up until that noise disappears. If I move down to the landscape detail, however, you will see that this now looks quite flat and lacks detail. Increasing the luminance details slider can help with this slightly. One option you can experiment with is the default noise reduction behavior on the raw assistant preferences here. It is set to apply color noise reduction by default, which will estimate noise levels in the image and apply suitable color noise reduction as appropriate. You can also change this to include luminance noise reduction, which will provide a suitable level of luminance noise reduction based on that noise level estimation. This option will not apply straight away, but rather when the next RAW file is opened for development. Also of note on this panel is the RAW engine option if you are on a Mac. This lets you toggle between Affinity's own RAW engine and Apple's Core Image RAW engine. One reason to do this might be if you are shooting with a relatively new camera, and RAW support is added to Mac OS and therefore Core Image RAW before support is added in Affinity Photo's RAW engine. We then have the Tones panel, which allows us to apply a small subset of adjustments to our image, such as curves and a black and white conversion. Manipulating the color contribution sliders allows us to achieve quite a dramatic black and white render of our image. The settings are stored if we disable this adjustment, so we can quickly toggle it on and off. The Overlays panel facilitates selective adjustments based on a brush or gradient mask. For example, if I select the Overlay Paint tool and begin painting, using the right bracket key to increase the brush width, a new brush overlay will automatically be created on the Overlays panel. If I have painted over areas I did not mean to, I can switch to the Overlay Erase tool and just tidy this overlay up slightly. Now I can switch back to the Basic panel and can use some of the options here, such as Saturation. You can see on the image that this is only affecting the Brush Overlay area. If I switch to the Overlay Gradient tool, I can now click drag to draw out a gradient over the sky area. Then I can reduce the exposure slider, mimicking the effect of a graduated neutral density filter. To switch back to making global adjustments, I can go back to the overlays panel and select master. Then I will find I have all the options available once again. I can toggle a split 
or mirror view up here. With the split view, I can click drag to alter the position of the column so I can easily compare the before and the after. The mirror view presents the same image side by side, allowing us to pan and zoom around both copies simultaneously. Once I am happy with the processing results, I can click develop in the top left here. This develops the image and brings us through to the main photo persona, where we can perform more work using non-destructive layer-based editing. And that was a look at Affinity Photo's raw development. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.